Why do Harley riders hate this on their motorcycles? That's what we're going to talk about today as I expand upon a short that I made just a couple weeks ago that got a pretty intense conversation started around rider aids. Now, I'm going to make a case why I believe there were so many people that do not like rider aids and maybe some of the reasoning behind that. And I'm also going to tell you why I believe rider aids are beneficial to all motorcyclists, including Harley riders. If you like what I do, consider subscribing, hit your notifications so you never miss one from me. Let's go and get into it. Now, when I talk about rider aids, we are specifically talking about ABS, cornering, ABS, traction control, cornering, traction control. Motorcycles are coming equipped with these things now more than ever. And as a matter of fact, the new Harley-Davidson Road and Street Glide actually comes standard with these bikes now. Indian in their Dark Horse series on their Challenger and their Chieftain has been coming standard with these features as well. And plenty of other manufacturers are putting things just like this, uh, including sport bike riders who have wheelie control and another whole host of different aids that they have. Now we're just mainly focused on cruisers today, specifically Harleys, but rider aids have come equipped on motorcycles now for quite a while and more and more manufacturers are starting to put them as standard equipment or at least optional in a lot of their lineup. And I guess the same could be said for riding modes. So things like, you know, rain mode that are going to uh, have the maximum intervention of things like ABS and traction control and limit the throttle response is somewhat of a rider aid as well. Indian actually uses a six axis uh, IMU from Bosch that does the same thing. So it's always looking at your wheel speed in relation to your lean angle and doing its job in case you screw up and keeping the motorcycle upright. So I've seen quite a few studies, uh, one from 2003 to 2019, that stated that motorcycles equipped with ABS were actually a little over 20% less likely to be involved in a fatal crash. And that's just ABS, and that is one of the most important things on motorcycles today, because if you happen to grab too much front brake, the sensors are going to release those brake pads and then reapply once it's safe to do so in order to keep that wheel spinning. And all of this stuff happens in nanoseconds. It is constantly reading that rear wheel and ensuring that if something bad happens that it will intervene. Now, I know a lot of people said in that short that first of all, um, I'm better than any kind of technology like that on my motorcycle. Other riders said that basically having these safety features ensures that, you know, you're not going to practice this. It's going to be somewhat of a cushion for you and you may even take more risk because you have these things on your bike. There was others that said, hey, I want to have full control of my motorcycle. So I don't see a reason in having these rider aids because I want to be in control of that bike. And of course, there was others that have been riding since they were you know, 15 years old and now they're in their 60s and said that they've never had rider aids and they've never had any issues either. And all of that sounds really good in a perfect world. And so one question that I would pose back to anybody that had a response like that or similar is how much time are you spending actually training and practicing threshold braking, emergency braking, slow speed maneuvers, weaving through cones, weaving from a dead stop, doing U-turns, stuff like that. Because admittedly, these are things that I have just now started taking upon myself in order to get better at because I see the true benefit in doing those things. It's not just something you can do once and forget about it. It's something you actually have to actively do. While you don't have to spend hours, you know, and, and, and tens of hours a week doing this stuff, you do need to spend a little bit of time each week in order to not only sharpen your skills, but keep those skills sharpened because it is a perishable skill. Now, if your answer is that you do practice all of these things, well, that's fantastic, but like 97% of the riding population doesn't do those things. I still have a heck of a lot more practice that I need to do in order to become comfortable with these things. And I use myself as an example because I really 
kind of thought before I really started practicing this stuff that I was good enough to do any of this stuff on my bike and I was totally wrong. I thought that by practicing it, you know, a couple of times that it was going to be good enough. And when put in a position uh, or an emergency situation, I would rely on these things that I've done maybe one or two times in a parking lot. But again, that is just simply not the case. Now, again, you may spend the time practicing, but we know that the majority of motorcycle riders literally just want to go in a straight line. And this is nothing against anybody that actually actively goes out and practices, but any of the motorcycle trainers that you see right here on the internet, the vast majority of the riders that come through the classes, it's obvious that they don't practice. That's why they need the training, which is a great thing. But that again, that's just unfortunately just a small portion of riders that actually go through that training. Now I'm not sitting up here on a high horse, but at the same time, I understand that mistakes can happen. You know, I still feel like I'm in control of my bike but recently when I did the tail of the dragon. At no point during the ride up or down did I think that, oh man, I have cornering ABS and trash control now. So I can just go through these leans and corners and turns and never even have to look through the corner. All I have to really do is just go in there be on the brakes or be off the brakes actually. And then if something happens, I'm just gonna slam that front brake. My bike's gonna take care of the rest. But what I do know, I went in there taking these turns and corners and things that I learned from Kyle Wyman out in Las Vegas and applied them on the road. Now, did I make some mistakes on the road? Uh, maybe a few, yeah. Uh, there might've been times where my line could have been a little bit better, but for the most part, I felt totally comfortable doing that. But I did have in the back of my head too, that these rider aids, if something just unfortunate happens and I do end up making a mistake, can potentially keep this bike upright so I don't drop my bike down the side of the freaking mountain. Again, was I actively thinking about this and banking on that? No, absolutely not. As a matter of fact, I started training when I got the new Rogue Glide. My old Road Glide had ABS, but it didn't have cornering ABS or cornering. It didn't have the RDRS package, essentially. So if there's any bike that I really should have been training on, it was that one. I'd practiced a couple of times and that was pretty much it, which is why you don't see me make a lot of videos when I talk about, you know, U-turns and stuff like that, because I had never really done it except for a couple of times. Even something as simple as being at a stoplight and being able to turn the handlebars and get out of the way if somebody were to come barreling up behind you, is that something you feel comfortable doing? Well, you don't really know unless you've done it and your instincts on a motorcycle, unfortunately, are very wrong most of the time. Even when I talked to Kyle Wyman out in Las Vegas and one of the presentations he had, you know, he mentioned how rider aids are a great thing and while you should not depend on those things, it's still good as a backup plan. And while you should learn the skills necessary to fully be able to control your motorcycle, again, it's just like your bike having your back in case things go wrong. Are there people that, that are going to solely rely on this stuff? It's possible, but I think if we get the information out there more and more to people like, hey, you should you know, try this kind of training and this type of training so you can be the best you possibly can be on your motorcycle, that that's going to be more beneficial because once you see your deficiencies and even the things you're good at, it's going to want to make you be able to, you know, do that 20 foot U-turn or, you know, anything like that. I know it has with me. Oh, there could be situations that happen where you, you get caught at night and I can imagine, really imagine, being caught at night in some of those roads up in Tennessee and upper South Carolina, North Carolina, all of that up in the mountains where you have these blind corners and you take them at night, you have no clue what is in the middle of the road. There could be water, sand, dirt, oil, and you may have no idea until you get right up on it. 
And I'm just talking about going the speed limit. These things can happen very quickly, especially at nighttime. So if you have those rider aids that are there to back you up, maybe you got leaned over in the corner, you're utilizing just a little bit too much traction and you happen to hit that front brake a little bit too abruptly. And knowing that your bike is gonna have your back. It's still gonna be butt puckering, right? Cause you're gonna feel some of that, but still it will give you a little bit peace of mind. And hey, the whole idea of having rider aids is to keep riders from dying, right? To keep us upright, to keep us on the road. If there's something there that can have our backs in case we make a mistake, I'm all for it. I, I, have, I do not have too much pride in saying, hey, I still need to train but rider aids are a fantastic backup for a lot of different riders. You know, now how many of these people that are against rider aids also don't wear helmets or don't wear any kind of gear? You know, it could just be a, a pride thing or it could just be, you don't think anything's ever gonna happen, you know, bad to you. And one thing I don't hope is that anything bad happens to any motorcyclist. I don't care what you ride and I don't even care how you feel about my opinion. It could be way different than mine, but I don't want anything bad happening to any rider. So practice and training is definitely something you still obviously want to do to be in control of your motorcycle. But I think rider aids are still a fantastic thing on Harleys, Indians, and all types of motorcycles. But of course, that's just my opinion, and I'd love to hear yours. Let me know what you think about this down below. If you like what I do, consider subscribing. I'd also love to have you guys join the Shot Squad either here or over on Patreon. Big thanks. See you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.